In this section, we'll be talking about architectural and scaling within vRealize Network Insight. When it comes to the Network Insight architecture, we have a couple different architectures in regards to depending on how we actually deploy vRealize Network Insight. With vRealize Network Insight, we have the capability of deploying either a SaaS option or we have the opportunity to use the on-premises offering. As far as the architecture goes, the biggest difference is going to be when it comes to the platforms is that the platforms are going to be hosted by VMware and managed and scaled on the back end and also upgraded. The collectors will always be deployed within your data center or can be actually deployed within a cloud environment such as AWS utilizing the available AMI. Depending on where your data sources are and what data you're collecting determines where you're going to want to deploy your collectors. As you can see here, we have our platforms and we also have our collectors. Now, depending on the size of the scale, which we'll touch on here shortly, it's going to determine on the number of platforms you're going to deploy, which could be into a cluster and also with the number of collector virtual machines. Notice both of these are virtual machines. These are deployed as OVAs and they function so there's no actually physical boxes being deployed when it comes to vRealize Network Insight. It's also important to call out that we are an agentless solution. So we do not use any agents on any of the different various vendors that we integrate with when we're pulling in various different data. You also have all of your data sources. And this is just a, a sample of some of the major logos that we integrate with within vRealize Network Insight. It's important to call out that we just don't focus on VMware products. We do have deep integration with VMware products and, and continue to develop integration with VMware products, but we also support third-party integrations. And as you can see here, there's many of the major players on the market. And this allows us to be able to provide that full 360 degree visibility picture within vRealize Network Insight. We'll touch a little deeper on data collection, but data collection can happen over various different things. It can We can utilize different protocols such as HTTPS for specific like API calls, SSH read-only, telemetry, SNMP read-only, IP fix, NetFlow, and SFlow ingestion. I'll dive into that here shortly. You also notice that the platform and collector virtual machines do have the capability of communicating with VMware for upgrade and support purposes. Every time a new release is released for vRealize Network Insight, if you're running the on-premises deployment, you can actually go in and do an online upgrade and it will contact the VMware upgrade server, download the available OVA to do the upgrade, and then you can actually schedule and run that upgrade within the product. If you're ever needing support on the product, you have the capability of opening what we call the service tunnel. And this is going to allow support to be able to work with you on troubleshooting incidents within your environment. This comes in very handy, especially when you don't have a lot of time to spend on the phone or sit in a uh, Zoom session, as an example, with a support tech specifically reviewing different files and so on within the back end of the product. Okay, so let's take a look at the two different offerings. I mentioned we have the on-premises offering and we also have our SaaS offering. I'm going to go ahead and let this slide build out here just so it's a lot easier to cover. And keep in mind, this is just a sample of what we integrate with from a vendor perspective, but just to kind of paint a general idea in regards to how we actually communicate and pull data from various different data sources. So starting off with the on-premises deployment, we can see here that we have our platform VM. We have our collector VM. And we can see that the collector VM sends data only to the platform via HTTPS or port 443. So this is an SSL secure tunnel that allows the data that the collectors are pulling to send to the platform. Users access the platform, which is essentially gonna be the GUI interface, which is run through and access via a browser. Currently we support Firefox and Chrome to be able to access the platform. And then you're also gonna be able to see that the collector is what is actually going out and doing collecting from the various different data sources that we support within vRealize Network Insight. So here you can see as far as things like VMware vCenter, NSX Manager, this is gonna be third-party physical switches, routers, and firewalls, platforms like Cisco UCS and Cisco ACI, SD-WAN, so for VMware SD-WAN, the VCO, and many, many more. 
So this is where we're actually taking and the collector is contacting these data sources and pulling data via the various different protocols that you see here, whether it be HTTPS, again, for API calls, SSH read-only or SNMP read-only, or streaming telemetry. When it comes to data sources, such as physical networking devices and VMware vSphere and also VMware NSX, we also ingest flows to provide you with the rich data and analytics with MV Realize Network Insight. This is going to be utilizing things like IPFIX or NetFlow or SFlow. So these are actually flows that are being sent from the devices over port 2055 to the actual collector. The only difference would be on SFlow, we use port 6343 for S-Flow communication. For the NSX Advanced Load Balancer, which was formerly Avi, we also collect flows on port 2191. And then you can see that we have other integrations, obviously with public cloud or VMware cloud. And a lot of that is gonna be utilizing strictly just API calls and pulling in specific data from those platforms, including flow records and so on. Lastly, you can see the VMware Cloud. Again, as I mentioned, this is for upgrade, registration, and support. And also if you're running federation inside your environment where you're federating multiple deployments of vRealize Network Insight into a single instance, federation will also utilize port 6060 to communicate with the various different VMware Cloud platforms to be able to see the different environments. You can also see down here that there's a link you can click on this link and it will actually take you to the vRealize Network Insight install guide and show you the various different ports that we use for every single different product that we support integration with. Moving on to the actual SaaS offering. So you hear this referred to as vRealize Network Insight Cloud or vRealize Network Insight Universal. The difference is Universal allows us to actually utilize the licensing to be able to either deploy in the cloud or on premises, whatever you may choose. Whereas vRealize Network Insight Cloud and vRealize Network Insight on-premises have separate licenses if you just want to focus on strictly running within SaaS or on-premises. Universal is considered the flexible option when it comes to deploying. So as we let this slide build out, here again you can see as an example the various different communication. Now you'll notice everything looks pretty much the same. The big difference is, is that the Network Insight platform and the upgrade support obviously are actually running within VMware Cloud Services. The collector is still going to be deployed in most cases within your data center. And this could be multiple collectors depending on the size and the scale. Again, we'll touch on that shortly. When it comes to things like Amazon Web Services and Azure and so on, the platform has a capability of collecting or connecting directly to those from the actual cloud. So you're not actually pulling from the actual uh, specific collector VM deployed within your on-premises environment. The users still utilize their browser to be able to access the platform. And when it comes to look and feel between the on-premises offering and the SaaS offering, it's very, very identical. The difference is, is the SaaS offering at different times offers more features than the on-premises offering. This is having to deal with monitoring the scale on the back end, And that's one of the beneficial points of utilizing the SaaS offering. VMware can monitor on the back end and see CPU and memory utilization along with things like how many flows we're ingesting and other data to be able to determine if we need to scale on the fly to support your environment. This is also done with the upgrades and so on and any type of maintenance is done on the back end automatically by VMware. It also takes the platform OVAs that are actually typically in the on-premises offering running in your on-premises data center that consume the most resources when it comes to deploying vRealize Network Insight when it comes to CPU and memory utilization and also disk space is now being hosted by VMware on VMware hardware on the back end. So you're not actually consuming that additional hardware space when you're actually running the SaaS offering compared to the on-premises offering. So let's talk about how secure is the data within vRealize Network Insight Cloud. 
And this also pertains to VRealize Network Insight Universal if you're using it in the SaaS deployment. So when we look at the various different data that is collected, we can see that we have our collector virtual machine that is running within your data center or multiple data centers or could be multiple collectors. You can see an overview here of what type of data is actually collected from the actual collector VM. This is collecting from the third-party data sources and the VMware data sources within your data center. So we're pulling in things like P's, machine names, routing tables, firewall tables, interface stats, etc., depending on the data sources that you've added within the product. What we do not collect on the collector is user data. So we are not pulling usernames, profiles, or specific data within a workload. All of the data that is brought into the collector is where that's going to do the deduplication, aggregation, and so on. And then that metadata that's collected is actually is what's sent in data in motion encryption between the collector and the actual platform. So here you can see the various different people that could access or personas that can access the actual platform if given access. And you can see here in regards to what the retention periods are and you know what is actually secured and so on. So data access when it comes to accessing the platform in the SaaS offering, obviously you as a customer have fully access to that. VMware has that from a support perspective and other VMware cloud services, depending on how many you're running or different services you may be running within your environment. But no third party visibility is allowed into the platform where the metadata is being stored. So this is keeping all of your personal data and so on within the actual collector within your own environment and is only sending the actual metadata collected and the aggregated data from the flows and all of the different metrics that we're collecting sent to the platform over an encrypted connection. Okay, so let's move into sizing and scaling. And it's really important, I wanna call out that when you're dealing with sizing and scaling, you wanna make sure that depending on the version of your Realize Network Insight you're going to be deploying or, or have deployed or going to be upgrading to, that you check the latest install guide for vRealize Network Insight, whether it's the SaaS offering or the on-premises offering, to look at the current scale. The scale does change with newer versions. We do obviously start to scale up over newer versions and allows us to scale to support things like the number of virtual machines in the environment, the number of flows, looking at like things like with VMware SD-WAN, being able to scale up on VMware SD-WAN edges, and then also other different things that we look at from a metrics perspective when we're talking about scale. So let's take a look at that. So here is an example of our current scaling when it comes to the platform. Now remember I said that we have the platform and we have the collector. So those are the scaling factors that you're going to have to look at between the two. Now the platform, this is going to be if it's running within the on-premise environment. You'll take this into consideration, obviously when it comes to the, the amount of disk space and the various amount of memory and also CPU requirements versus if this was hosted in the SaaS environment, obviously this is going to be consumed on the, by the, the hosting environment within VMware. Now, when you do your planning or installation, this is where we have the various different sizes. Now within the platform, I mentioned you can run as a cluster. So depending on the number of virtual machines within your environment, the number of flows that you expect to ingest per day, and keep in mind this is after aggregation, deduplication, and so on, along with the total flows, the flow planning, the number of devices. So this is going to be the number of physical devices. So we can see here 300, 400, 400. We can see the number of rules in the thousands. So these are looking at rules like firewall rules and routing tables and so on. When we look at VMware SD-WAN integration, this is based off of the number of edges that we support on a per platform basis. And then same thing goes with the number of VMs for the flow-based application discovery, which we'll touch on in a later section, and also the number of UI entities in the network map topology, which we'll talk about also under the insurance verification section. So we have different things that we need to take into consideration. So again, you have various different options. Again, the different brick sizes are gonna be the number of platform OVAs that are gonna get deployed and the cluster size and so on. This is going to show you basically the number of virtual machine, 
the number of flows and so on. So you can utilize this to help to determine the scale based on the size of your environment. Keep in mind, this is just an example and we can scale to larger numbers than what you see here, depending on what you're running in your environment. And again, if it's the on-premises or the SaaS offering will also make a difference. We're a little bit more flexible when it comes to the SaaS offering on larger scaled environments, larger than what you're seeing here. So this isn't really a hard limit, but you wanna keep this in mind when you're actually deploying your appliances. Again, if you're doing the on-premises deployment, when you take a look at deploying the platform, you wanna make sure that you're taking a look at the brick size. And these are the same virtual machine. The brick size, when it says medium, large, extra large, which is kind of like a t-shirt type format, this is referring to as basically how much CPU memory and disk utilization each one is consuming. And just by changing those for that appliance changes the actual brick size. So you can actually scale on the fly. You can see here the diff different amounts of memory and actual disk space and then CPU utilization each platform utilizes depending on the size of the actual brick that is deployed. Again, here's the latest documentation referencing vRealize Network Insight 6.7 and the current scale for 6.7. You can always check this for every release and it will be updated if the scale does increase. Moving on to the actual collector, let's take a look at the collector. So when we talk about the collectors, these are what are gonna be deployed within your data center and are going to be doing the actual data and flow ingestion and doing all the deduplication, aggregation, and so on. You can see we also have different size collectors that can be deployed. These are virtual appliances. And again, the way that these are scaled is the same way as the platform. The only difference is, is the amount of RAM and CPU and memory being utilized in regards to the size of the actual brick. Here we can see the various different number of virtual machines that we support on a per collector basis. And again, you can deploy as many collectors as you need to within your environment based on the size of your environment. And then you can also see the number of flows per day. And this is after deduplication and aggregation, the number of CPU cores, the number of RAM, and the amount of disk space. Again, I also posted the documentation here for the latest release that you can click on and take a look at the scale. But this is something you do want to take into consideration when you're deploying VRealize Network Insight within your environment. 